Hello, everyone. Welcome to International Business Correspondence Online Classroom. Today's course content is writing strategies of international business letters too. Writing strategies of international business letters too. Whether a letter can achieve the desired result depends not only on a certain level of English proficiency. But also on adopting different strategies according to the purpose, to organize the form of language well, to facilitate the completion of trade. Cultural difference compensation strategy. Business English following trade letters itself is a cross-cultural communication activity, due to cultural differences such as differences in habits, thinking differences. Cultural connotation differences and differences in the language itself; these differences can cause inconsistencies in expression and understanding. To compensate for these differences, it is necessary to deepen the understanding of the cultural background and customs of English-speaking countries, familiarize yourself with their way of thinking. And on this basis, fully understand the habits of English expression. Do not translate rigidly according to the meaning in your own native language. For example, in English, a five percent discount means deducting five percent, calculating at ninety-five percent of the original price. While in Chinese, a five percent discount. Means calculating at five percent of the original price. Two, request strategy. The ultimate goal of business foreign trade letters is to achieve trade demands and complete the transaction of goods. In this process, the two trading parties urge each other to act immediately through requests, or to make concessions to gain more benefits for themselves. Gain more benefits for themselves. Direct request strategy. If the purpose of the request is to obtain business information, maintain business relationships, or execute an already agreed business plan, which has strong reasonableness, you can choose imperative sentences beginning with "please." When the other party violates the agreement. Or does not timely fulfill their obligations, the writer has to make a strong request to urge the other party to continue to fulfill their responsibilities as stipulated. Indirect request strategy. Sometimes the writer fears being refused, losing face, or affecting the cooperation relationship between the two parties. Often choosing a more covert form. Namely, using an indirect request strategy to achieve the purpose. The most common are exploratory strategy and suggestive strategy. Please compare these three sentences. The first sentence used a direct performative strategy, using an imperative sentence to state their request. Despite using polite language such as "please," and the request itself. Being quite reasonable, it still creates a sense of coercion for the other party, especially with new customers, making them feel that it is more of a command than a request, causing resentment. The second sentence uses an exploratory strategy, making a request in an inquiring tone and giving the initiative to reply to the other party. It shows the writer's consideration of the reader's situation, even if refused, it would not cause embarrassment. The third sentence uses a vague performative strategy, stating the request in an expectant tone. Although the writer respects the other party's right to choose freely, it still seems embarrassing if rejected. Suggestive strategy. Is a tactful way of making a request. It seems to give advice to the other party, but in fact, it is selfishly hoping to exchange conditions with the other party to satisfy 
one's own demands. The purpose of these two sentences is to ask the other party to open a letter of credit as soon as possible. However, the former clearly urges the other party, based on our side's preparation for shipping, to fulfill transaction obligation, while the latter hides its own purpose. It seems more concerned with the other party's interests, and eager to prepare shipping for the other party. Benefit, cooperation, and costly complementary strategy. The initial intention of the cooperation principle and the courtesy principle is to promote business communication and obtain business benefits. When facing a cooperation crisis, the writer often has the following three choices: high benefit, high cooperation, high courtesy. When the writer has a strong willingness to cooperate or tries to protect their own interests. They will choose to use highly courteous words to express, such as appreciate, thankful, kind, and so on. Medium benefit, medium cooperation, medium courtesy. Despite having a conflict of interest, still hoping for cooperation to continue, the writer can choose to use transition sentences or concession clauses. First, state the unreasonable request, and then express that they can accept or partially accept it, making the other party feel your understanding and concession, thereby putting yourself in a favorable position for future cooperation. High loss, low cooperation, low courtesy. When the other party's request is difficult to accept and cooperation is no longer possible. The writer can directly refuse or use words expressing regret, such as regret, sorry, to attribute the failure of cooperation to the other party. At this time, the politeness level of the latter's language is at its lowest. Of course, to keep open the possibility for future cooperation, or out of courtesy. The writer should still avoid using hurtful language as much as possible to create opportunities for future cooperation. Okay, that's all for today's class. Goodbye. Now, please complete a few exercises.